Okay, welcome to the Bears Hall of Discipline today for a little Bible study in the book of Deuteronomy. Way back in the Old Testament. Deuteronomy chapter 9. Moses is going to do a little rehash of history. A little rehash of rebellion and disobedience in the nation of Israel. Not for the purpose of judging, for the purpose of reminding them, don't do this, because there's consequences. Sin has consequences. You can get away with it. You know, like a Christian that decides to do social drinking, you know. It'll rob your joy, friend. You can get away with it. It's, you know, was it going to keep you out of heaven? Drinking didn't. Drinking doesn't really... They had. They drank wine, you know, and so forth. Whether or not they had the whiskey booze and all that, I don't really know. But if you give yourself to too much wine for the purpose of drinking and inebriation and all that, you'll find it robbing your joy of the Holy Spirit. And the Christian walk without the joy of the Holy Spirit, that's sad. That's sad. Find yourself making bad decisions that, in, that also having bad consequences. So, Children of Israel had some challenges, as we all do, and they made some poor choices. Sometimes it was their attitude to, let's return to Egypt. Then they're not remembering the bondage they're in, the slavery. Sometimes Christians say that. Many of us have been down that road. The Lord freed us, made us clean, granted us the joy, the heavenly gift of the Holy Spirit. And then we look back. We say, let's go back to Egypt. Let's go back to this life of sin. But it's never the same again because you've tasted of the Holy Spirit. And you better be careful because you might wind up like Hebrews chapter 6 talks about having tasted of the Holy Spirit and wind up being burned. So Israel gets that refreshed reminder today. From Moses, don't don't do this. As you go into the land, in battle and war, obey. When the Lord says, "Do thus and thus," do thus and thus. So here we go, chapter nine of Deuteronomy. Hear, O Israel, thou art to pass over Jordan this day to go in to possess the nation, nations and nation greater and mightier than thyself, cities great and fenced up to the sky, a people great and tall, the children of the Anakims, or the giants, whom thou knowest and of whom thou hast heard, say, who can stand before the children of Anak? All these cities of the giants, they did exist. Well, giants did exist. Very possibly the offspring of human and fallen angel or demonic relations. We're not really sure, but they, they did exist. The giants did exist. They were, they were monstrous. 10, 15 feet tall probably five to a thousand pounds, 500 pounds to five, 500 pounds to a thousand pounds or more or less in there somewhere. They're big, they're monstrous. They're not gonna stand before God's people because it, God has it in his heart and mind to allow the people of Israel to drive them out of their land. Because this is, this is their land, God has promised to them. They built the walls of their cities huge up into the skies, up into the heavens. For them, that was 
what was that, 300 feet, what was it, the, the walls of Babylon were monstrous, up to 300 feet high at points and, and higher. And for other cities, same, same or bigger. And yet the children of Israel rolled in, and with God's help, they brought him down. Verse 3. Understand therefore this day that the Lord thy God is he which goeth over before thee as a consuming fire. He shall destroy them, and he shall bring them down before thy face. So shalt thou drive them out, and destroy them quickly, as the Lord hath said unto thee. Speak not thou in thine heart, after that the Lord thy God hath cast them out from before thee, saying, For my righteousness the Lord hath brought me in to possess this land, but for the wickedness of these nations the Lord hath drive, driven them out from before thee. So it's not because you are righteous, Israel, it's because of their wickedness God drove them out. That's just the bottom line. We are not righteous because we're good people. We're righteous because God had mercy on us and we submitted to his request. Submit to the Son of God. Enter in through the door of Jesus Christ and the sacrifice that he paid by faith and repentance. And then follow me. That's what God our Father says to do. And it's not because we're good boys and girls. It's because we have made the choice that he has offered to us and we accept it. We must make the choice. Because God wishes for all men to be saved and none to come to the death, to the fiery pit, and the outer lake of darkness and fire for all eternity. God doesn't want that for you, but if you choose it, you have chosen it. Because whatever God does is fair. Verse 5, Not for thy righteousness or for the uprightness of thine heart doth thou go to possess their land, but for the wickedness of these nations the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee, and that he may perform the word which the Lord sware unto thy fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Understand therefore that the Lord thy God giveth thee not this good land to possess it for thy righteousness, for thou art a stiff-necked people. Remember and forget not how thou provokest the Lord thy God to wrath in the wilderness from the day thou didst depart out of the land of Egypt until you came into this place you have been rebellious against the Lord. Also in Horeb, or at Mount Horeb, you provoked the Lord to wrath so that the Lord was angry with you and he would have destroyed you. They gave themselves to great revelry and and dining, drinking, dancing, song, amongst other festival monstrosities that go on. When people are given over to whiskey booze and partying and that kind of thing, they, they were really close to being wiped out. Verse 9. When I was gone up unto the mount to receive the tables of stone, even the tables of the covenant, which the Lord God made with you, then I abode in the mount forty days and forty nights. I did neither eat bread or drink water. So Moses was in the spiritual realm, in a supernatural spiritual condition. Because you can't go without food or water for 40 days and 40 nights unless it's spiritual it's miraculous as Jesus did in the wilderness and Moses does here as he ascends the mount and meets with God and he receives the Ten Commandments and the law and the instruction verse 10 and the Lord delivered unto me two tables of stone written with the finger of God, and on them was written, according to all the words which the Lord spake with you in the mount of the midst of the fire in the day of the assembly. 
And it came to pass at the end of forty days and forty nights that the Lord gave me the two tab tablets of stone, even the tables of the covenant. And the Lord said unto me, Arise, get thee down quickly from hence, for thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. They are quickly turned aside out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten image. Furthermore, the Lord spake unto me, saying, I have seen this people, and behold, they are stiff-necked people. Let me alone that I may destroy them and blot out their name from under heaven, and I will make of thee a nation mightier and greater than they. So Israel came really close. Probably a lot of us come really close. God gave us one last few bunch of chances to turn around and come back to him in repentance and faith. Israel came to that point, and, and many died in the process to, to refine the nation of their sin and wickedness. Verse 15, So I turned and came down from the mount, and the mount burned with fire, and the two tables of the covenant were in my two hands. And I looked, and behold, he had sinned against the Lord your God, and had made yourself a molten calf to worship, and ye turned aside quickly out of the way which the Lord had commanded you. They were, they were just rescued from Egypt, from all the idolatry and the molten calves and the, and the, the, the reveling parties. And they were just delivered from that. And, and they thought in their hearts, Moses is gone, his brother Aaron's around, Aaron doesn't have quite the spiritual love for Christ, for God, for the Son of God. And um, Aaron was moved by the mob to do what they wanted, not what God wanted. And that's always a big mistake, friend. Always be careful just because the mob says this and the, the big establishment has pushed something. Make sure you obey the Word of God first in the name of Jesus Christ. So Aaron didn't do that. And he he brought great judgment on Israel because he did that. And Moses picks back up in the story here, verse 17, And I took the two tables and cast them out of my two hands and break them before your eyes. He, sh he smashed them in front of me. In other words, if I brought these tables into the camp, you'd all be smitten, number one, figuratively. Secondly, you guys don't deserve these beautiful tablets of stone. And thirdly, Moses feels they are unworthy for me to bring them into the camp. I just can't do it because they are, they are far from obeying this. So whatever the, the heated moment was, he smashed the covenant, the Ten Commandments, if you will. Now later he had to chisel out a new set of tablets and bring them up to the mountain. Then God wrote again the, the Ten Commandments of the Law, as you will, back on the tablets. God always wrote them, but the second set, because Moses smashed them, he had to chisel them out of stone. But God wrote on both of them. And the ones that Moses had chiseled out and God wrote on, those are the ones that were put inside the Ark of the Covenant, the, underneath the mercy seat in the box. Okay, with well that, verse 18. And I fell down before the Lord as at the first forty days and forty nights. I did neither eat bread or drink water because of all your sins which ye sinned in doing wickedly in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. For I was afraid of the anger and hot displeasure wherewith the Lord was wroth against you to destroy you but the Lord hearkened unto me at that time also. And the Lord was very angry with Aaron to have destroyed him. And I prayed for Aaron also at the same time. As I said, Aaron helped them build a statue, a golden calf, if you will.
Seems kind of bizarre that the children of Israel would do that. But remember, eventually that generation was snuffed out in the desert. For Forty years they wandered until they were died off, thinned out because of the rebellion against God, where when they were to come into the land, they, they refused. Unless we move on. Verse 21. And I took your sin, the molten calf, which you had made, and burnt it with fire, and stamped it, and ground it very small, even till it was small as dust, and he and I cast the dust thereof into the brook that descended out of the mountain. And we don't read that here, but he made them all drink of it. So if you really want this little calf that will deliver you, drink of it. Think that it's going to do you any good. Some restaurant you go into, they have a golden or a brass looking thing with a big belly sitting in front of you. And you think to yourself, you, you really pray and worship something like that? That the thing can't move or talk or do nothing. How, how, why do you pray to it? But they do. There's a, there's a certain sect of people that will choose to worship demons rather than the truth of worshiping the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who has made the plan of salvation so simple and easy. Nonetheless, it boils down to a choice for Israel and for us. Verse 22, and at Taborah, and at Massah, and Kibroth, Hetavah, he provoked the Lord to wrath. Other places of disobedience. Likewise, when the Lord sent you from Kadesh Barnea, saying, Go up and possess the land which I have given you, then you rebelled against the commandment of the Lord your God, and you believed him not, or hearkened unto his voice. You have been rebellious against the Lord from the day that I knew you, thus I fell down before the Lord. Forty days and forty nights as I fell down at the first, because the Lord had said he would destroy you. I prayed therefore unto the Lord and said, O Lord God, destroy not thy people and thine inheritance, which thou hast redeemed through thy greatness, which thou hast brought forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Remember thy servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and look not unto the stubbornness of this people, nor to their wickedness, nor to their sin. Lest the land whence thou brought us up out say, because the Lord was not able to bring them into the land which he promised them, because he hated them, and he hath brought them out to slay them in the wilderness. Yet they are thy people and thy inheritance which thou brought us out by thy mighty power and by thy outstretched arm. Sometimes, God removes the lampstand from a church, Christian gathering, Bible study group, perhaps even a family. Because they've shelved the Bible. They've turned to pleasures of this world and they've put the Lord aside. The Lord removed the lampstand of his presence out of their midst. But the Lord is merciful. If he gets to the point where he removes the lampstand, expect that tribulations of judgment will start to enter into your life, your family, your relationships. Because God has invested something into you. He's, he's sealed you with the Holy Spirit. Doesn't mean you can't be blotted out. You can. You continue in wickedness and sin. You get to the point where you don't think that you need to repent of your sins. That's when you become dangerously close to the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. And that's Hebrews chapter 6. You can read about that. But God brought Israel out of Egypt. He has a plan for them. The quicker they submit to him, the better. 
They learned out the hard way that there's consequencing consequences consequencing your life when you say no to God. Who all of you can raise your bare paw up in the air and say, "Yeah, I'm, I'm I've tasted of that because of bad decisions." Many of us have. When you learn from them, it's good. Because God can cause all things to work together for good for those that are called according to the name of Jesus Christ. If you'll simply repent and submit to Christ by faith. And then get back on that narrow road and walk with all your heart. So my final farewell today is do just that. If you've gotten on the rocky roads of life, straight off from that narrow pathway of the Son of God, open your spiritual eyes. Give yourself back to the reading of the Word of God, to prayer spending time with him to let that sin shed off of your life like scales and reptile skin peel it off don't ever look back don't, don't look back to Egypt there's nothing in Egypt for you but oppression sin sorrow look ahead to life eternally in our heavenly father in Jesus Christ, the Son. God bless you, friends. See you next time.